Hey folks, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So, last week, we uh, reconditioned and refinished the uh, the wheels and got some new tires for little John. Yeah! <laughs> so this week, we are kind of buttoning up a few of the things up underneath the truck that I need to get finished up. Uh, namely, bleeding the rear brakes out, just to verify that they're actually working. Um, I was going to go ahead and pull the drums and check and see what kind of pad life we had or brake shoe life we still have back there. But to be honest, I don't care at this point. <laughs> if it stops, it stops. Uh, front ones are darn good. So I'm assuming the back ones are good. Uh, but we do need to bleed them because whenever I just held the brake down, I could still turn them with just my hands. Uh, now granted it was a little tough, but I was still able to do it. Uh, so we're going to at least get them uh, bled out today. That's the first thing because I have Jackson sitting there in the driver's seat. Where's Jackson? There he is. <laughs> and uh, he's going to do some pumping while I do the, uh, you know, bleeding. So uh, I guess let's get right at it. Uh, I've got everything kind of prepped and ready. So uh, we're going to start farthest away from the, uh, the master cylinder, which is going to be driver's rear. Um, because my cylinder feeds, you know, it feeds back and over and down that side and then over to that driver's rear. So uh, we'll do driver's rear, then do passenger rear and uh, try to make sure that we uh, keep fluid in this little reservoir here so we don't run air back into it. So, all right, let's get to it. Here's my bleeder. Where's my bleeder? Right here. <laughs> uh, I've already gone through and loosened these guys up earlier just make sure they would break loose and they do so uh unfortunately i can't get a wrench back there so i'm gonna have to use a freaking socket not a big fan of that but uh, jackson's already pumped it and he's holding it right now so break it loose and see what we got Must have tightened that up a lot tighter than I thought. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Mm. All right, well, um, I just broke the bleeder off, so that's great. <sighs> Maybe it wasn't turning as easy as I thought earlier. Now I've got to take down the entire rear end because, uh, Got to get the drones off so I can get the master cylinder out so I can switch out the, uh, so I can at least get that bleeder valve pulled out. So, God almighty. What kind of happy horse crap is that? <sighs> Here we are, New Year's Eve. It's, I don't know, four-ish in the afternoon. Um, I'm not planning on going anywhere tonight. I'm just, you know, I'm still getting over this head cold crap. Um, but I was like, you know what? I've got enough energy. I can get out there. I can at least bleed these rear brakes, get that done. Go ahead and get kind of a head start on next week's episode. And yeah, and then the, the bleeder breaks off. So you can see she, uh, she just twisted right off. Son of a... <laughs> so now I have no choice. I've got to uh, go ahead and break down the rear end. Uh, or at least the rear brakes and uh, get the wheel cylinder out. So in order to do that on these full floater, you know, dually rear ends, um, there's no really easy way to go about this. Um, you've got these eight bolts to hold the axle flange in. So uh, got to get these guys broke loose, got to slide and the whole axle's got to slide out. So it's going to be longer than this section. So I'll probably have to move this out of the way but uh gotta slide the whole axle shaft out and then there's like if i remember right there's a oddball nut or something in there and some uh lock washers or something i don't remember exactly what all's in there but there's a couple things in there you got to get loose and if i remember correctly you got to pull this collar and everything off that'll come off and then you can pull the drum off and uh i just ain't got it in me tonight so <laughs> <laughs> maybe tomorrow i'll feel like tackling that job um but if i'm gonna tear down one side i might as well tear down the other side so uh it's kind of one of those sensuous things and the snowball begins but uh <laughs> but we can at least tear it open we can figure out what's going on in there check the shoes make sure the shoes are in good shape and if they are you know we'll just run them 
Um, I'll probably, I'll have to see if I can't extract the bleeder out of that uh, wheel cylinder. If not, I'll have to get another set of wheel cylinders. I may just do that anyways, just to be on the safe side. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what it looks like whenever I get into it. So with that, I'm gonna call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the best laid plans so uh anyways all right i'll uh i'll just i'll see y'all guys tomorrow all right folks so we're now on the uh the passenger side i was trying to record this on the driver's side it's just it's two tight quarters over there um to get a good camera angle and let y'all guys see you know kind of what's going on here so tearing down these uh these dually rear ends you know, this is a 14 bolt. It's pretty much out here. This is pretty much all the same as like the Dana 70. I don't know about the Dana 80s because I don't, I just don't know. But uh, when you're doing a 14, 14 bolt or a Dana 70, which would be pretty much what you're going to run into on these old, uh, on these old dualies, especially the square, you know, square body Chevy ones. Um, you're going to see the 14s. Or you're going to see the, the Dana 70s. So uh, it's a full floating axle. So that means that this is the axle shaft. This is the flange of the axle shaft. It sits on a bearing out here and then it hooks directly into the uh it hooks directly into the differential over there so uh, uh so to, to basically get this drum off you gotta pull the axle out um then there's like i said there's a lock ring and a nut and a couple other things you got to deal with inside here um so uh, uh so we'll go ahead and, and break these eight bolts loose these are three quarter inch uh bolt heads so we'll go ahead and break all these guys loose and slide this axle shaft out a uh, couple of notes before you get started on this. Make sure you have a drip pan up underneath you because it should drip out some uh, gear oil. Um, also have plenty of uh, paper towels or rags handy because it's going to get messy. Well, only two of these suckers are loose. Somebody got a little overzealous when I was cranking these down. <sighs> Pull that out now. Oh, the wonderful scent of gear oil. Now you see all this surface rust and crap like this that's built up on here. That's actually kind of normal. Um, just from, you know, condensation, change of temperature, you know, things along those lines. This truck did sit for, uh, you know, what, since 2014. So, you know, we're almost 10 years. So, uh, yeah, so a little bit of rust build up from condensation is to be expected. Oh Lord, just barely enough room. I'm just kind of wiping this thing up. Just kind of wiping the loose oil and crap off of it for right now. Um, I'll give this guy a proper cleaning and uh, make sure I really give it a good clean up uh, a little while later. But uh, yeah, right now it's just kind of a quick little clean up. All right, now somebody used a little bit of orange uh, RTV to kind of seal this guy on up which is totally fine there is another gasket on here let's see if i can't get this guy off yeah there we go it almost feels like a metal gasket <clears throat> but uh you just want to be real careful with it so you don't you know break it when i was doing the uh when i was doing big john uh this thing was i think a cardboard or not cardboard but a cork type gasket and uh it pretty well just disintegrated on me and uh i ended up just using this orange rtv to seal it up uh whenever i put big john back together so i i don't want to say that you don't necessarily need this guy but uh hey if you can keep it and it's stay in good shape and you can reuse it do it uh otherwise like i said rtv it worked just fine on big john 
and as far as I know, and as far as I can tell, it's still holding, and it's been about three years, so uh, uh, seems to be holding out all right. So I'll just clean this guy up a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna set it up here on the bed rail so it don't get lost. All right, now we are into this guy. So you can kind of see, or maybe you can't, but there is a little bit of gunk and crap floating around in here. But here is our little lock ring. And it's just a simple little lock ring. And it comes out real, relatively easy. You just spread her out and pull it like that. The next fun part is this little guy. You might be able to see it, you might not. There's a little, little square peg right here. <sighs> And that little fella's got to come out. But the problem is, is getting something to hook on to it. Because it is a smooth little piece of metal that uh, just doesn't really have anything to bite on. Okay. So I got walked out a little bit. Like I said, I tried tearing down the other side on the camera, but there's just not enough room. So you could probably use some needle nose to grab a hold of that little fella. It just slides right out. Um, but I was having a hard time with my needle nose getting a grab on it. It just didn't want to grab. So I've got these little, little ring pliers. Um, just got a finer tip to it. And I actually get in there and just grab a holt. Well, should be able to grab a holt of it. Ah, I went back in. If you had a fairly strong, uh, small magnet, you might be able to, you know, do something with that. Oh, here we go. Just pull it out with the. Uh, with the pick. How's that sound? I ah, better not press my luck here. Let's just grab a hold of it. Pull it out. So yeah, this is the little guy that we were just trying to get out. That's all it is. That just gets held in place in this little channel in the uh, the axle tube. Um, and then there's a spot in this nut uh, for this guy to slide into. And then that little lock washer just kind of keeps it all in place. Alright, now that that's out of the way, we can get this... Uh, we get this nut out now they make a tool that has little studs on it that grab the little there's little half moon sections on here they make a, a little you know socket that basically just slides on and spins it right out i don't own one of those um i think i have one for the front axles on the four-wheel drives but uh, i don't actually own one for this nut so instead of doing that we're just going to take a screwdriver because these guys should not be that tight so we're going to take a screwdriver. Give it a little tap with a hammer-like appliance, aka vice grips. And uh, yeah, then you can pretty much just spin this guy right on out. Let me get a smaller screwdriver. It'll fit in there a little easier. And there we are. Yeah. So I'll give you a little better look at that nut. So, all right. There's that. Also, now you can kind of see the outer bearing um, right around there. So uh, next step is to actually pull the whole drum and everything off, which, uh, yeah, it's heavy. It's real heavy. <laughs> So I'll, uh, I'll get ready to pull that guy off here in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, I got to move the camera. Uh, yep. You're going to be a pain. So we're probably got a ridge on the inside of the drum, uh, that's not letting it slide past the, the brake shoes. Um, on the passenger side, I ran into this. I was able to finally get it to knock loose, but uh, I had a little more more. I had a little more swing on it with, than I do on this side. Um, the other problem I had on the passenger side was the uh, the adjuster for uh, uh, for the you know spreader 
the, the adjuster for the shoes. <laughs> it was seized up, so I couldn't adjust in the shoes any. So, uh, uh, you know, brute force is kind of the name of the game here. That's exactly what the problem is. <sighs> Let me go get a hammer. Ugh, a little persuasion. Swing this big bastard out of the way. God dang. Uh, that's a lot of weight to, uh, you know, sling around while you're on your knees trying not to lose balance. So, uh, very similar situation to the other side. A lot of filth, a lot of dirt, a lot of grime. Um, so, I think what I'll do, as soon as I catch my breath, is... Uh, <laughs> I'll get in here, I will scrape all the hard crap loose, vacuum this guy up, clean it up a little bit, make it a little less filthy, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Alrighty, I guess it's time to start tearing down these drum brakes. Um, I don't do drum brakes enough to remember exactly where all these springs and levers and linkage and all this crap goes, so I always make sure um, Go ahead and snap a couple pictures. So I, I usually take one up in this area, then one over here on this side and one on this side, just to make sure I got everything, you know, covered in pictures. Um, that way I know where stuff goes whenever it comes time to it, uh, to put it all back together. So, uh, you know, usually in the past, I, I generally just use a pair of, you know, vice grips or needle nose or whatever to get most of this stuff done. You know, I, and I've got a brake tool, you know, I've got a drum brake tool and I don't use it that often, but uh, I tell you, sometimes it actually does pay off. So, you know, we'll go ahead and use it on, uh, you know, getting these guys broke loose because uh, these springs, they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> but whenever, uh, when it comes time to, you know, break them loose, this, this little guy right here is just, I mean, that's the cat's pajamas. It makes things so much easier. pull the whole thing off yeah. got no e-brake cable on this side you wouldn't be able to do that if this uh, e-brake cable was actually hooked up but it's it's been cut I'm, I'm guessing somebody didn't know what they were doing and cut it loose so all right I definitely need to keep track of my little uh, piston you that's a little grody so we've got uh all the brake stuff out of the way for the most part uh still gotta drop this master cylinder out of the way or uh sorry wheel cylinder gotta get him dropped out um on the the driver's side when i did it 
uh, the brake line was actually seized to the inside of the uh, the uh, the brake line fitting so uh, it actually twisted the line off so uh, I got to fix the line on that end yay and uh, so hopefully this side won't be as bad I, I went ahead and shot it with some uh, free all hopefully to you know loosen it up a little bit so we'll go ahead and shoot down in here a little bit of free all maybe Maybe that'll soak in there and help the uh, the bolts that hold this guy in from you know breaking off on me. So I don't, I don't really want that to happen either. So we'll give it another shot on the back side, and we'll see what happens. All right, let's see what happens with our brake line. Is it going to play nice or is it going to be a pain? Mm. Oh, I think this one's actually going to play nice. Yep. All right, well, there's our master cylinder. All nice and pretty. All right, well, now I've got uh, both sides brakes broke all the way down. Um, you know, we've got... Uh, this guy i gotta finish disassembling so i can get it uh get some of the pieces off of it and get them cleaned you know the adjuster down here that thing's froze so i'll have to try to get that broke loose um let me get that little bar i don't even know what it does but i just you know that's where it goes so <laughs> so i gotta get that guy off there get him cleaned up um i may try and see what i can figure out here's our emergency brake cable um to be honest, I think I have a set of these out back. Um, or maybe over there. I, I know I have a set of uh, e-brake cables somewhere. Um, and this will be the long one that goes from, you know, as it feeds from the driver's side. This is the passenger side of the truck. So I think I have one of those. And if I do, I'll just, you know, get it and put it on here and actually have a function in e-brake. Um, you know, that's... Those are kind of handy when you're running a manual trans. Um, I know you can leave it in gear, but you know, what if your engine doesn't make a lot of compression and the weight of the truck overcomes the compression of the motor and it just kind of slowly starts, you know, walking back as it goes through the cylinders. <laughs> Seen it happen. <laughs> I mean, you could just toss a brick behind the tire and it'd be all right, but uh uh, yeah, I'd rather have a functioning, you know, e-brake. So, uh, uh, so I'll check on that part. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've either got it out back or I've got it over here. Um, I'm almost positive I've got it over here underneath the shelf, but, uh, uh, I'll, I'll check on that. But, uh, yeah, so got her all broke down, went ahead and decided to go ahead and replace the wheel cylinders. They're $13 a piece. I mean, what's the harm? That one looks pretty cruddy um it's not in the best shape the uh the other side was worse so uh uh plus you know broke off the uh the bleeder on it so you know 13 bucks 14 bucks whatever uh a piece for those that's just peace of mind at this point uh i did go ahead and buy a new hardware kit which is the new springs and crap that i just pulled off it'll be nuke springs um I think that's it. It's just a new spring kit. I could have gone all out and got the really nice hardware kit, but it was like 50 bucks and I didn't want to do that. This little spring kit was eight. <laughs> eight dollars, fifty dollars. Uh, so I got that. And then I went ahead and bought uh new shoes. These shoes, um, they're not terrible. They they got plenty of life left in them. So I figured I'd go ahead and just replace the pads. You know, it's it's one of those sensuous things. I'm already in there, I might as well. You know, the, the, the freaking bleeder over there kind of forced my hand because <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't have opened the damn things up. So next steps are going to be uh, getting down here and cleaning all this stuff up, you know, freshening up that surface, making it all nice and clean-ish, um, cleaning up all my pieces and parts that I got to reuse here. Same thing on the passenger or driver's side. I uh, got to, you know, clean up all those pieces of parts that I'm going to reuse and uh, then just reassembling everything. Um, then I can get to uh, actually bleeding the brakes and making sure they work. The other concern is the gear oil. It's really dark, so it probably hasn't been changed in forever. So I guess 
we're going to do that too. <laughs> we're not doing that today. But that's going to wrap it up for tonight because, uh, you know, I got, got to go back to work tomorrow. Stupid work, getting in the way of work. <laughs> So, but you know, I can't complain too much. I've been off for you know almost two weeks, so it's it's been kind of nice. Um, so I guess uh, I'll try and get back out here uh, sometime this week. If not, it'll be Saturday before I get back out here and actually get to do any work. Um, but uh, we'll get back at it uh, uh, hopefully here in another day or two. Get back out here and at least work on it a couple hours a night or something. You know, see if we can't get some work done during the week and uh, have this thing wrapped up. Um, at least the underside of this truck wrapped up so we can put these fresh new wheels and tires on here <laughs> and uh, actually get this thing, you know, quasi mobile, maybe. I don't know. We still got lots of stuff to do. I really want to get this thing on the road. So, all right, that's enough for me for tonight. So, with that, uh, I guess I'll see y'all guys in, uh, in a day or two. Well, good morning, folks. So, uh, got out of here this morning. It's Saturday. Um, and started working on the uh the adjusters so uh this guy came off the driver's side i scuffed it down with some sandpaper just so that way i know exactly who this guy was um this guy was completely seized up uh this one was a little tight but i got him to break loose pretty easy so you know our our cap here on the end it moves nice and easy and then you know we can adjust and unscrew and screw in as much as we need there that one was easy this fella on the other hand this uh, cap was completely locked down so ended up heating it up and uh, putting it in the vise just getting a good decent grip not too tight with the vise and then just taking my big screwdriver putting it in the end there and just slowly working back and forth till it finally broke loose and now i was able to get it off and then I had to polish it. It had uh, quite a bit of rust in there. So I just took a little piece of uh, Scotch-Brite and uh, polished it up real good. Try to get all the rust off of it. So that's all good to go there. The uh, And the screw in and screw out, the adjustment side of it. This guy was seized up. Um, I'd thrown it in my little tub of diesel and let it soak you know, pretty much since Monday. So I took it and let it soak that didn't really do anything um so i ended up having to get out the propane torch or the uh, map torch whatever you're gonna call it uh and heated this guy up till it got just i mean stupid hot <laughs> um and again stuck it in the vise and just grabbed it with a pair of pliers and just started turning and uh you know working it back and forth i hit it with a little bit of free all and uh yeah, she finally broke loose. So, um, ended up taking it completely apart and cleaning the threads with the wire brush. And, uh, yeah, she turns really good and easy now. Only thing I got to do now is, uh, put some, put some lube here on this end cap to keep it from seizing up. So that way it can, you know, do its thing. So we got that part knocked out this morning. Um, didn't take too terribly long, probably, you know, 20 minutes, maybe 30 so uh now we are moving on to here <laughs> the backing plate um which is pretty much in the exact same condition i left it uh, on monday um i still need to get that little crossbar out and uh, clean it up and get it ready to go um so there's still a little cleanup stuff to do nothing major just you know just cleaning up so uh, i'm gonna get on that and get that finished up i gotta try and hunt down that e-brake cable pretty sure i've got one i'll start digging for that here in just a couple minutes so uh i guess uh, i'll get i'll get on finding that and cleaning up just the mess that's boring <laughs> it's just scrubbing so uh i'll get to cleaning and finding my e-brake cable and uh then we'll get we'll get back to it as soon as i get all that finished up all right quick tip um i know i know it's extremely aggravating when it comes to uh pulling e-brake cables out um these things are a freaking nightmare because you got you know a tab here tab, you got four tabs all the way around the base of this guy but if you take a nine millimeter deep well and get her in there it's kind of hard to do with just one hand but you take a nine millimeter deep well 
stick it in there and start twisting should come out like butter now if it's got a uh, uh, you know the cable on it you can't get uh, can't get the cable all the way through the uh, socket uh, you could probably do close to the same thing with a uh, uh, with a wrench you know a box end wrench or just a regular wrench uh, basically the key is keep tension on the cable and you can just roll that wrench around and it hits those tabs and it slowly you know lets it go but if you've got a busted cable like this one nine sixteenths slide it on there wiggle it around pull on the cable she'll pop right out every time and it's so much easier than fighting with a pair of needle nose <laughs> little little pro tip for you or amateur tip or good enough tip yeah there it is <laughs> All right, let's get uh, let's get y'all guys caught up with what's going on now. So got the new wheel cylinder mounted in. Um, went ahead and got him mounted in. Went ahead and plumbed the the line up. I mean, it, it's two bolts, so it's not much not much missing there. Uh, went ahead and got the uh, the little pistons. Uh, you have to reuse these guys um, from the old setup. Um, little uh, see if I can't get that out of there. It's a little bit tight now, but. Uh, if you notice, I got a little bit of grease on there uh, just to let this guy kind of move around in the rubber without, uh, you know, this little rubber boot so it doesn't stick. So uh, I took those guys, the little pistons, these little fellas, uh, took those over to the bench, cleaned them up. Uh, they were pretty, pretty grimy. <laughs> cleaned them up, hit them with the wire wheel, um, and then uh, polished, polished basically uh the tip that goes into the uh, the wheel cylinder um yeah basically that tip right there just kind of cleaned it up a little bit better with the uh the, the scotch bright pad so uh so that guy's cleaned up he's ready to go um like i said go ahead hooked up the uh the line on the back side driver's side i'm gonna have to actually fix that because i you know broke the line i did find my uh parking brake cable uh, I just kind of laid it in place here. I didn't worry about taking the other one out right now. It's just kind of hanging here free, you know, willy nilly. So I did find my other brake cable. Um, pretty much where I thought it was, somewhere over there underneath the truck, actually underneath a cabinet or a shelf. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? I uh, <laughs> uh, went ahead and opened up the uh, the spring kit, uh, you know, the, the parts kit, hardware kit, whatever you want to call it. I uh, got that. I took all the pieces that I needed to reuse for this, took them over to the bench, cleaned them up, scrubbed them real good. I, I didn't hit them all with the wire wheel. Uh, basically, the, just the contact points. I went through and scuffed those guys up with Scotch Brite just to make sure that they, uh, you know, any buildup that would cause them to stick or, you know, not do their job. Uh, and then I went ahead and assembled the drum brakes. Um, so you can see we got our adjuster in here. He's run all the way in. I uh, went ahead and hooked this spring up, uh, got our adjuster stop. I don't know the names of all these pieces and parts, but <laughs> I went ahead and got that guy hooked up. Um, he's in there with a new bushing. Uh, let's see, the spring kit or the hardware kit that I got did not come with a new one of these springs. So I just cleaned this one up and had to reuse it. Same thing here. Uh, I think that's it on the springs. I uh, went ahead and laced in all the, the other the other two springs up here and that rod that ride up on the stud. Uh, got everything pretty well laid out, ready to go uh, to where I should be able to just set it in place and, uh, you know, get it secured-ish, um, get it kind of ready to go. Uh, still going to have to hook up that brake, that e-brake cable, which is actually easy on this side because on this side... <laughs> Um, you know, it's not hooked up to anything, so I can just kind of pull out slack. The biggest challenge you run into is this damn spring gets in the way and you can't get this, uh, this little hooked in on that guy right there because you're constantly fighting the spring. One thing we've done in the past is a, uh, a small vice grip and, uh, basically you pull the spring back, you clamp down the vice grip to hold the spring and then lay it in there and then turn the vice grip loose. That usually gets it. So uh, um, if I run into a problem on the passenger side, I'll show you how to do that, but it shouldn't be a big issue. Uh, I know it is frustrating though, because uh, that is uh, that has been the source of many, many swearing uh, sessions. So 
<laughs> uh, so, okay. Yeah, got this guy. He's all pretty much ready to go. So all I got to do now is just kind of slap him up here and uh, finish getting all the hardware put together. So I'm going to do that real quick, and uh, then I'll be right back. All right, folks, so uh, this break is pretty well complete. Um, I did, uh, I had to move the camera out of the way, trying to get all this stuff because everything's shifting and moving, and uh, I had to really kind of get in there to uh, hold stuff. You know, really three hands is what you need for this, but uh, you know, I've only got the two. So, uh, uh, so I had to really kind of wrestle with it to get it settled in kind of a place to where I could actually put it together. Uh, one thing I did, which I I do almost every time I do rear break, or drum breaks, is this little crossbar. I had it backwards, so it was hitting right up against the flange uh, for the axle here. So I had to take it all back apart, flip it, and get it back in there. Uh, but everything kind of lines right back up. Um, everything kind of goes, you know, sits where it should. The e-brake cable that I found, well, right there is the part that should be right there. And I've got a lot of slack. And if I push that slack in, it's more than this can take. So uh, it's a lot more slack than what I can fit in here. Um, and at that point, it's actually coming unseated from the uh, from the spot where it's supposed to be. So, yeah, that cable may not work. It may be a totally different type of cable. You know, you figure, why not give it a shot? It's there. So uh, it didn't work, but that's okay. So I'll probably just pull that off of there. We just won't have any break on this side. And uh, uh, hopefully the other side still works. So, <laughs> so anyways, having all this stuff done and ready, uh, we're pretty much ready to uh, put the drums back on, or at least the drum on this side. I still gotta put the, uh, the driver's side together. Um, we still gotta put the drum together, or uh, put it back on. Uh, I do need to resurface that since we are using new pads. I checked with O'Reilly's here in my town and they can't turn that big of a drum. He said last time they tried to do that, it uh, dang near burned up their machine. So uh, uh, they can't turn those drums. I haven't priced out what it's gonna cost for them. I remember when I was doing Big John, that was the reason why I decided to say screw it and go ahead and do a, uh, um, a disc kit on it because to redo all the brakes on this was 350 bucks 380 bucks something like that and this is you know three years ago four years ago something like that um it was going to be you know three to four hundred dollars and a whole disc brake set was 500 so you know that's why i went that route then um i may just try scuffing these and calling them good but i was looking over here at uh at the old shoes and you can see you know we got uh we got a heck of a ridge going <laughs> going on in there uh that's on the driver's side i haven't looked here on the passenger side i don't really see any big ridges or anything it's actually kind of smooth so uh we may be all right i'll uh at very least i'll hit them with some you know like 80 grit just to give them a surface and uh you know if they kind of deform the new shoes whatever that's okay <laughs> well We'll just deal with it um and then down the road if you know like i said if i keep the truck and uh we get going maybe i'll find another 14 bolt uh that already has disc brakes and put that on here maybe with a a little uh taller or a shorter gear you know something like a 373 or a 350 something gear uh since these are 410 i think 411 something like that um so maybe re-gear it that way and put a disc brake rear end on it Maybe uh, maybe put a disc brake conversion on it. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, uh, so I'm gonna go get the drum for this side and get it scuffing and cleaned up a little bit and see if we can't uh, uh, just reuse that guy instead of ordering a new drum. So uh, so yeah. So I guess I'll do that and I'll uh, I'll, I'll holler back at y'all whenever I get uh, get that drum prepped and ready to ready to slide back on here. Well, with an activity that took way too long. <laughs> I finally got uh, this drum cleaned up. Um, went through, you know, scuffed the uh, brake shoe surface. Uh, went through and uh, scraped up and cleaned up and, you know, just took a wire brush and cleaned up in here. Careful to keep uh, crap from falling down where the bearings are. Uh, ended up noticing, thankfully noticing that, uh, well, you can't really see it anymore. 
kind of destroyed the uh, the wheel seal um, that was in here. <laughs> uh, it was missing a big chunk of rubber, like right over here. Well, it wasn't completely missing, but it was flopping around. And it was really, really stiff and uh, wasn't very, you know, wasn't flexible. So it probably would have torn uh, and then started leaking, which then, you know, gear oil coming into here and then soaking all the brakes. The brand new brakes with uh, good old, you know, what, 8090 gear oil. <laughs> Wasn't about to have that. So uh, uh, it took a little doing to get uh, to get that uh, wheel seal out. Ah, you can kind of, I mean, I mangled the crap out of this thing. But uh, it finally come out. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, but it finally came out of there. <laughs> and whenever I got it out of there, I also pulled the uh, the bearing out and just checked the bearing. Bearing's clean. There's no pits. There's no, you know, hot spots. There's no rubs. It's it's nice and clean. So uh, we're just gonna work, run the bearings we got. Uh, I checked the other drum. I uh, just checked the bearing just by rolling it. It feels really good and smooth. Um, that's on the inner. So we'll have to check the outer bearings later. Um, but they look to be okay. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything different there. So now I got to run to the parts house and go pick up a new uh, wheel seal. Uh, I did check the other drum, uh, that wheel seal. It's actually got plenty of flex left in it, so I'm not going to worry about replacing it. Um, it seemed to be, you know, plenty good as far as, you know, flexibility. So it wasn't like hard and brittle. So, uh, uh, so that wheel seal should be fine. I uh, got to go pick up another wheel seal for this side, get that installed, and then we can put the drum on. So, uh, yeah, it turned out okay. You know, we still got a pretty good ridge right here out on the outside edge. That's definitely going to leave a mark on the new pads, you know, but it, it'll be all right. So the, the rest of the drum down in here, it actually feels pretty good. There's a couple little couple little ridges right in here that you know it'll probably scar the new shoe up but uh for the most part that drum's good um i i checked the width on it or the the diameter um according to what minimum thickness would be you know so you'd go from this corner to this corner and minimum thickness is just a shade over 13 inches uh these are sitting right at 13 inches so uh they would not be able to be turned. Uh, I toyed with buying new drums, but uh, they're a hundred and like a hundred twenty dollars a pop <laughs> for new drums. You know, then I got to knock the uh, then you have to knock the studs out. You got to knock the uh, the wheel studs out to separate the drum from the hub, and then reinstall the studs, which really isn't that big of a deal. But you know, it's an extra two hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty bucks. I'd have to spend on, you know, brake drums. And these will work. They'll be just fine. So, uh, all right, I guess I'm going to run to the parts house, go pick up my wheel seal, and uh, maybe some brake clean because I'm definitely, I'm, I'm down to like two cans. So, uh, uh, so I guess I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. New wheel seal's in. I uh, just used a hammer and a two-by-four and just walked around, you know, worked, you know, knocked it, knocked it down as I walked around it. Um because that thing is four inches wide and a two by four is only one and a half by three and a half. So uh, couldn't, you know, split the whole thing and go around it. So just kind of walked around it, got it seated. So that's all ready to go. I uh, slapped a little bit of grease here on the axle. Um, just a very, very thin coat. That's all I put on there. Um, also put a little bit of grease on the wheel seal on the rubber, just so it doesn't grab and snag and, you know, ruin a brand new wheel seal. So, uh, I guess I'm gonna go pick that heavy son of a gun up, <laughs> bring it over here and uh, see if we can't get her slid on there. All right, now comes the fun part. I'm trying to lug this big son of a gun up onto here and not uh, not tear anything up. So uh, there may be some uh, there may be some sounds coming out of me as I stretch and try to do this without uh, falling over and hurting myself. So, uh, ugh. it's kind of a two man lift, but there's only me. So, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's see what I can't do here. Ah! Well, 
that didn't go as planned. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point, though. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> so we're not quite seated yet, but we're almost there. We've got plenty of room around the drum and the brakes. I wonder if the nose Whew. almost seated <laughs> this thing's heavy as hell ah, there we go all right ran over cleaned up the the nut um it had a bunch of gunk and crap all over it so gave it a quick scrub a dub and we can run it back home all right that should be pretty tight <sighs> Yeah, she don't want to budge no more. And we're pretty well lined up for our little, uh, you know, square peg. So we just take and shove that guy on in there. Then we take our little lock ring and uh, pretty much just kind of do the opposite of, you know, <laughs> opposite of installation. All right, so the drum's now reinstalled. We got the nut on there. We got our little square peg, and then we've got our you know little lock ring that goes right here. So now we're pretty much at the point where we can go ahead and slap the uh, the axle back in and uh, bolt it back down and do all that fun stuff. But before we can do that, um, I've got to clean this guy up. It's uh, it's not too bad, but it's still got a good bit of rust on it and stuff. So I just want to you know try to get some of that grime and grit off of it. Um, no sense in throwing that back in the axle or in the axle tube, I, should, I guess I should say, uh, if we don't have to. So uh, uh, so I'm gonna clean that guy up here in just a few minutes because um, I'd like to go ahead and at least get one side completely done and then that, <laughs> and then off camera I can work on the other side. So <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'm gonna get over here and uh, uh, get the scrubbing on this axle. Not anything crazy, just gonna take and hit some brake clean on it, uh, wipe it down, hit it with a wire brush just to knock all the loose stuff off, and uh, uh, then it'll be about ready to go back in. So uh, uh, so I'm gonna go do that, and I'll, uh, I'll catch back up with y'all when it's time to put that axle back. So I went through, cleaned this guy up, just kind of scraped him up a little bit, made it, uh, you know, fairly good. <laughs> I don't have any orange gaskets. I've got this black gasket maker, so it ought to work just fine. It is oil resistant. Uh, actually, I did have two tubes of orange, but they were completely dried up. So, <laughs> so not going to worry about those guys. So I think what we're going to do first is uh, throw a little gasket maker on the back side of this. I'm not worried about coating the crap out of it. I just want to get a nice little bead um, just on this inside lip. And then uh, maybe just a little bit between, you know, around the... The bolt holes um, just to make sure it seals up good so throw a little bit of gunk on here all right now we got her covered on both sides and of course I've got it all over my fingers because you know that's how this works so we're gonna set that there set that back over there and of course I forgot to grab a rag alrighty so I took the axle shaft out and uh, just gave it a quick rundown with the wire brush um, just knocked all the loose crap off, shot it with some brake clean, um, you know, just to get the, the grimy, grimy crap off of it. So, uh, should be good to go. 
So uh, we can go ahead and slide this guy on in and then we can get her lined up and uh, well, you know what? First, I need to pull this out. <laughs> that'd be a that'd be a bad time. All right, so I got that pulled out, and I had to go a little weird of an angle coming in here. Now the fun part is trying to find trying to find where you need to go on the carrier side and sometimes you just can't get the right leverage on it so you can grab a screwdriver and see if that'll help you get the get the right leverage so you can just slide it on in just like that so now that's there And we can go ahead and get our bolt started in. Now, I did take these bolts and give them a good scrubbing so that way they were good and clean. Uh, also, previous person had uh, filled, basically filled up the thread on these guys, uh, the bottom of the thread with uh, uh, sealer, you know, seal, uh, gasket maker. So, uh, you know, I cleaned all that crap out too. So now we should be able to just run these on in. All right, so I just ran those in. I'm not, I, I haven't cranked on them or anything. I'm not sure what the torque spec is. I'll look that up um, and I'll get back with you on that. But uh, for now, we're just gonna torque it down with a little, uh, with a little impact. Well, there we go. We're torqued down. We've got uh, fresh-ish brakes. I'll probably need to uh, adjust the shoes um, to make sure that we got the right amount of drag on it. But uh, yeah, so there's no drag on it right now. So there's a little window there at the bottom of the uh, the backing plate. Um, you can stick a screwdriver in there. They actually, I think they make a tool for it as well. But you can stick a screwdriver in there and hit the little star wheel um, on the adjuster and push your, your, uh, and push your shoes outward. Um, cause you just want a little bit of drag on these. You don't want a whole bunch, but just a, just enough to where you can kind of hear it dragging. So, uh, I'm going to look up my torque specs and, uh, figure out exactly what I need to torque these guys to. And then I'll see about adjusting those, uh, uh, shoes out so we can get a little drag going on this guy. And, uh, we'll catch back up here in just a few minutes. Okay, so the uh, the axle flange bolts, those are torqued to 115 foot-pounds. So uh, I've got my torque wrench set, but since it's just me, we're gonna set uh, this little pry bar and we're just gonna slide him in right here. And that'll get my, that'll keep my, my wheel from turning and my hub from moving. So we'll, uh, we'll give this guy a couple cranks and get her, get her torqued down. Well, those are all torqued now. So just roll this guy backwards a little bit. Get my pry bar out. So the only thing left to do here is uh, get in here and adjust the uh, the spread on the shoes to make sure we got a little bit of drag. Um, I gotta get a broom and sweep up because it's pretty filthy over here. So <laughs> let me do that real quick and uh, we'll get these guys uh, adjusted out to where we got a little bit of drag going. And then we can uh, we can move on from there. All right. Well, I almost screwed myself over here because uh, my uh, jack stands are right in the way, so I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just having to fill around. Oh, that's not it. There he is.
Yeah, I got quite a ways to go, it looks like. Uh-oh. Yeah, that'll work. So there's definitely a uh, not round spot somewhere on this drum because we got pretty easy slight drag and then big drag. But that gets us close enough to where whenever we go to bleed these, that'll take up the slack and we'll be good to go. Alrighty then. So we got uh, we got the rear brakes knocked out, at least on the passenger side. Driver side still hadn't been done. Um, I'll get on those either later today or tomorrow or something. Um, but it won't take too long. I'll just turn the music up and just get at it. But uh, I went ahead and put the wheels on. And Lord have mercy. <laughs> it looks great. Um, now, I did go ahead and uh, order the, uh, the center caps. Um, actually, I ended up ordering a whole set of simulators. Uh, it was a $30 price difference between just the caps and the caps and all the simulators. So screw it. Might as well. It was like 220 bucks, kind of steep, but they are all polished stainless steel and they, they're really nice. They're the same ones I have on Big John and uh, I really like them. But uh, rather than keep y'all guys waiting, check this out. Look at that. <laughs> Them wheels look great with the center cap sitting on it. I think it looks fantastic and then i went ahead and put it on the front one as well so we got a center cap up here on the front and uh yeah that turned out very very nice so uh with that i think i'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this video up um like i said all i got left to do is put the entire driver's side rear back together <laughs> so i'm gonna do that off camera don't worry about that so if y'all guys uh, like the video be sure to hit the like button um, if you don't follow me on social media and you want to, all my information is listed down in the description. Uh, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, whatever, uh, just drop a comment down below. I always read them. I don't necessarily respond right away, but I get to them as quickly as I can. Um, and then also if you made it this far and you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. So <laughs> it just helps grow the channel, but I do appreciate y'all guys watching um you know next week we'll do a little bit more on uh little john yeah <laughs> and we'll get this thing on the road here for long hopefully so uh <laughs> so i do appreciate y'all guys watching uh look for us uh next week when uh we do something else i'm not sure yet but uh we'll move on to doing some other fun stuff on this truck and uh get one more step closer to getting it on the road so uh y'all guys take it easy and uh, we'll see y'all guys next time. And just remember, folks, ain't got to be perfect. Just good enough. And man, I'll tell you, that looks good enough. <laughs> y'all take it easy. We'll see y'all next time.